What's worse than devoting your energy to mastering the impossible or spending countless hours of your precious time completing an epic trilogy only to have the conclusion slap you in your digital face? Not much. All right, hit the change of venue button, now! Oh no, you're in Texas. Here are some of the most insulting endings in the history of video games. Warning, massive spoilers ahead. Ghosts and Goblins This 1985 side-scrolling classic is probably the first video game with a truly insulting ending. Which really stings, since the game is pretty solid, aside from its absurd difficulty. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. That knight is fighting monsters in his undies. Hits make you lose your armor until you're basically questing in the buff. Developed by Capcom for arcades, but released on several home consoles, Ghosts and Goblins rewards players who beat it with the following text. This room is an illusion and a trap devised by Satan. Go ahead dauntlessly. Make rapid progress. Yep, that's progress with one S. And leave off the last S for Satan! If seeing a misspelled message in return for your tireless efforts isn't insulting enough, Players are then tasked with playing the game again, but this time at an even harder difficulty. Why? So you can see the true ending. What is the true ending, you ask? Surely it must be worth the brutal controller-breaking second playthrough, right? Well, you be the judge. Congratulation! This story is Happy End, is the sloppily translated message you're greeted with, followed by Being the wise and courageous knight that you are, you feel strength welling in your body. Ah yes, that familiar feeling. Strength. What is the great task now required of such a valiant soldier? Return to starting point. Challenge again! This game is a trap devised by Satan. Fable 2 This 2008 open-world RPG sequel is considered by many to have one of the worst endings to any video game in history. Where do you even start? First, in a lengthy, epic role-playing game, one would at least expect a halfway decent final confrontation, right? Sure, not every video game can have the best ending ever, but gamers like a little challenge. So what challenge does Lionhead Studios present players of Fable 2 in the game's epic conclusion? Press a button. Any button. Just press a button and the villain dies. In fact, even if you don't press a button, he dies. You literally don't have to do anything to defeat the final boss. Epic. To add insult to injury, Fable 2, a game all about choices, gives you a measly three final game-ending choices, all of which are relatively inconsequential and none of which make much sense. In virtually every way, Fable 2 sets the standard for how not to end an otherwise fantastic RPG. Of course, that was the standard until... Mass Effect 3. Not everyone was insulted by BioWare's ending to this epic trilogy, but those people weren't paying attention. The result of dozens, if not hundreds, of hours exploring, fighting, relationship building, planet mining, decision making, and cringy romance, the ending to 2012's Mass Effect 3 presents players with essentially three decisions. Control, destroy, or synthesize. All things considered, it's a bit like choosing your favorite color, red, green, or blue. In other words, boring. What is your favorite color? Blue. Right, off you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. That's more or less the only thing that changes in each ending sequence. Not even the most hardcore of Mass Effect fans could justify this ending as being anything less than offensive. In a game that's all about choice, agency, and the practical effects of your choices, every single player experienced almost the exact same ending. The reaction was so negative, BioWare even released a rewritten and free DLC ending to try to make up for it. Borderlands Gearbox Software's role-playing shooter is no stranger to silliness. However, the game's over-the-top nature simply can't justify this obnoxiously offensive ending. After 25 to 30 hours of frantic first-person shooting and role-playing, or 60 hours if you're a completionist, Borderlands rewards players' quest for the vault with a not-so-pleasant surprise. As we've already learned during gameplay, the vault can only be opened every 200 years, and by the time we've finished dispatching the Destroyer, a monstrous guardian of the prize location, the vault gets sealed for another 200 years. Needless to say, this ending didn't sit too well with fans. 
Nothing like playing an entire game searching for pieces of a key to open a legendary vault, only to have said vault shut in your face for another three lifetimes. At least Claptrap is turned into an interplanetary ninja assassin, but that's still just the insulting icing on the disappointment cake. No Man's Sky This 2016 open galaxy indie sensation has proven to be one of the most disappointing games in recent memory, if not of all time. However, the game might have had a shred of redeeming quality if, when players arrived at the center of the galaxy, there was a surprise that made the entire lonely, monotonous journey worth it. Not only is there no surprise at the center of the universe, there's literally nothing at the center of the universe. Nothing! What's in the box? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! To those gamers lucky enough to have skipped this ultimately unremarkable game, it's like this. Just imagine putting yourself through hours upon hours of almost mindless drudgery until the fateful moment arrives when you can finally click on the center of the universe with the teeny, tiny, infinitesimal hopes that somehow, someway, it might all be worth it. And then, then you just watch the map zoom for several minutes before beginning a new game? Not quite. You keep all of your stuff, but the ship is broken, and you're in a new universe continuing your journey with all knowledge and experience kept. It just breaks your stuff and spits you out. That's it. What could possibly be a worse ending to such an incredibly disappointing game than asking players to do it all again? You gotta give Hello Games credit for one thing. It successfully managed to insult just about everyone who played this massively overhyped project. Stupid! You're so stupid! Halo 2. Who can forget popping this 2004 Xbox classic into that hulking black beast of a video game console and drifting away into beautiful first-person space shooting bliss? Yes, those were the good times. Until the abrupt and totally insulting cliffhanger posing as a legitimate ending made us all stare at the screen, dumbfounded, and ask, Is that it? Although it was apparently not the ending the creators wanted to make, Players were left with an incredibly unsatisfying taste in their mouths when legendary spaceman Master Chief, secretly aboard the spaceship called The Truth, says this. You mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. But then he doesn't finish anything. The game cuts to black. The end music plays. Roll credits. Have fun waiting for the sequel. Should be two or three years. Tops. Anyone who looks back fondly at this cliffhanger as an epic moment in gaming history is either living in denial or a victim of revisionist history. The game may have been awesome, but the ending was awful. Batman Arkham Asylum After the amazing gameplay experience of the first installment in the Arkham series of Batman games, players couldn't wait for the epic finale Rocksteady Studios concocted. Unfortunately, the ending to this 2009 title is weak, to put it mildly. The Joker himself is anything but weak, as he injects himself with Titan, a super steroid that makes him massively muscular. And then we get a super strong Joker, because that's what fans have always been clamoring for. The Joker plus muscles, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. The ending that comes from this fight is a serious letdown. A steroid-inflated Joker reeks of a lack of creativity, and the whole game culminates on a forgettable boss battle. For a villain who's always played mind games with the Cape Crusader, using brute strength simply doesn't sit well. The game fails at doing anything even remotely interesting with the idea. It's just a standard boss fight, and then it's over. Although the game itself is objectively very, very good, even the most optimistic of Batman fans can't help but admit that the ending is pretty lame. Final Fantasy X Unsatisfied, confused, bored, underwhelmed, these are not feelings you want to experience after devoting between 80 and 200 hours to a video game. Yet that's what many players were left feeling after watching what passes for an ending in 2001's Final Fantasy X. With the villainous sin defeated, Titus and Yuna can finally let the good times roll, get married, and have some babies, right? It's party time for the summoner and crew, surely. But wait, is Titus a ghost? Or a dream? Titus isn't real? What exactly is happening? Even by Final Fantasy standards, this ending is more than a bit convoluted, and a whole lot of lame. So lame, in fact, that a sequel was required to even get close to justifying this insulting, anticlimactic trash ending. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords 
Nothing reeks of rushed ending quite like a few minutes of dreadfully boring dialogue you desperately wish you could fast forward through, all with a somewhat secondary character about hypothetical scenarios, which fail to actually detail the fates of characters you've already invested dozens of hours into. Sadly, this is what players of the otherwise excellent 2004 sequel are left with. Knights of the Old Republic 2 is an all-around terrific Star Wars role-playing game, blending a great storyline with solid combat into an engaging experience. The ending, however, is anything but engaging. It's boring and loaded with baloney. Then, when you think about it, it is a prequel series, and we all know how those Star Wars prequels tend to go. Rampage It may not have had the worst ending of its generation, because strong, but the ending to this 1986 arcade classic still hits you right where it hurts. Maybe your sad childhood memory here goes something like this. You stayed up all night with your best friend, determined to beat the NES port of Rampage. Perhaps it all started like this. Whoa, nice graphics. I'd like to get my hands on that game. You mean you haven't played it yet? For a game called Rampage, starring giant monsters, it's actually kind of dull, even when competing cooperatively with a friend. But you wouldn't turn it off until you discovered what was at the end of this nationwide disaster. The ending would justify the experience, right? It has to. Finally, you get back to California, level every building, dodge all sorts of military-grade projectiles, and wait anxiously for your reward, and then... Congratulations! That's it? Thank you, Rampage, for ruining at least five hours of America's childhood. Stupid! You're so stupid! Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.